Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Uh, I'm 151 mile away from where I'm going, down south. I'm going to interview uh, Alan Minter. Somebody's arranged it through social media and give me details where to go and that. So I'm just on my way down now. It's Monday, Monday half five. Uh, shattered. Uh, take a break. Take a break. That's what it says on me thing on the dashboard. I must be drifting off. Take a break. Take a break. So we took a break. Uh, so I thought I'd uh, just have a. Not be crashing, do we? Safety, health and safety is paramount. Says me. Says me. Worst, probably worst driver in South Yorkshire. I don't like A1, it's full of wagons in it, but I think it keeps you on your toes. I think if you're on M1, I think you can drift off a bit. Drift off. Don't talk to me about drifting off. I've rolled more cars than uh, Louise Aitken Walker. Right. Just some things that people have been asking me. I've jotted them down. I've, uh, I can't. I can't go through everybody's questions that I'm getting because it's just getting a bit popular now. It's what I've always wanted, though. So it's good, isn't it? But I can't get through them all. But I've took something from everybody's questions and just jotted all them down. Uh, just a quick jot of downs. One here. Uh, Anthony Yard is he world level? No, I don't think he is. Uh, I don't think we know what level he is actually. If he's not world level, Russ, what level is he? Well, he's not beat a British level guy, has he? Boatsy, Jose Burton, Frank Bugley only, Callum Johnson, the top British guys, he's not beat any of them. And they're all British level, aren't they? Uh, after Boatsy's win at weekend, he's just British level, isn't he? I think I make Yard a favourite in that fight. Uh, if not, what level is he? British level. He's not beat a British level guy, we know that. Uh, he's... Hang on. Something is good, but he's good, but jury's still out on him. Russ, what do you think to that? Yeah. Uh, he's got huge endorsement deals. Yeah, he has. He's got Maxi Muscle and... He's a Adi face of Adidas, you know, Ad Adidas, whatever they call it. Uh, so good luck to Anthony Yard. His management team around him have obviously done well to get him that because I couldn't tell you five of his wins and I beat Chris Hobbs and Sig Locker. But all the rest of them, garbage. But So he's been kept away from hard fights and he's earned a few quid, so that's good. He looks the part, well, good, but bodies don't win uh, fights, do they? Bodies win bodybuilding competitions, don't they? But bodybuilders can't put muscles on chins, can they? And he got knocked out with a jab, didn't he? So, uh, I want to see him fight Johnson, Burton, Buglione. Oh, he's coming back, according to Terry Chapandana. Buglione, oh, he's training. I'd like to see him come back. I like Frank Buglione. I think he comes across all right, but I like his style as a boxer. He tends to go for it. He went for it against Callum Johnson, and he got caught. The guy there running across petrol station with his socks on. Maybe all right, him at DM Electrical. Right, I mean, him come to your house, wouldn't you? He'd never wear his socks in your house. <laughs> uh, so I uh, hear yeah, he's Frank of Willow is coming back, blah blah blah. So let's see if it is true as Frank versus Yard is a good fight. Do you agree, Russell? Yeah, I do agree. Uh, let's not get carried away by the hype from Tunde, as in my opinion, Porky. Uh, all Yard did was share round eight. Uh, I may I may sound harsh, but the jury's still out. As on paper, he's best when he's who Russell. Uh, Russell is two L's, not one. 
Uh, Porky, what do you think to Dave Allen's glasses? FFS. I'm taking that means for F sake. Uh, well, Dave Allen's not wearing his glasses now. He wore them after the prize fight. I don't know why he wore them. He either needed to wear glasses uh, or... I don't know. I've never heard anything about glasses making your health get better or bad headaches go away. I don't know why he wore them, I don't know. Dave Allen don't wear glasses, he's not wearing them now, I've been told. So I don't know, but if he wants to wear them, that's up to David, isn't it? If he wants to wear glasses, if if he's wearing it for PR or something, I don't really get what he's doing there, is he? I don't understand all that, so I don't know. But so I can't answer you on that, Jonathan. Uh, Eddie Earn saying you're either with me or not, Porky. Is he trying to bully people into signing with him? Uh, Eddie likes guys to declare undying love to him, like Bellew, Yafai, and Dave Allen. Uh, some guys don't do that. Do you agree, Porky? I don't know. Maybe. I think every promoter likes you to be 100% behind them, don't they? They've all got massive egos. Uh, one thing Dennis always goes on about to me is loyalty, and I think that's because I think he's been shafted hasn't he, by a lot of people, and he's on guard on guard with it. Even with, with what I do for Dennis, I mean, the job I do, you could say, I think Chris Medley and Richard Pox and we were paid good money to do it before it passed. Pox and had a BMW, didn't he, and a wage every week. But he was running a gym as well for Dennis, so and I don't do that for him. So I don't know. I think loyalty is a big key for promoters. If you're loyal, they'll go into bat for you. Uh, but then again, then always preaches loyalty to me, and well, you want to get things done without paying. So I don't know. I think it's a two-way street. I think promoters and boxers are just as bad as each other. Uh, it's a dog business, isn't it? Promoters, Frank Warren once said to somebody I know, I'm not going to say who, but he said, you've got to treat fighters like shit. You've got to treat them like mushrooms, keep them in the dark and feed them shit, something like that, I think it was. So, but then again, Frank Warren, who, I don't know, all the fame promoter, he's done well, Annie, he? But he's not behind the door when it comes to pound notes, is he? And if Frank Warren wants to talk about loyalty, well, he needs to tell the exact true story of why Billy Joe Saunders left, doesn't he? I think that needs to come out because that's all a bit undisclosed and in it. So, uh, Porky, Tommy Frank versus Sonny Edwards, the saga continues. Why do you defend it? Uh, I haven't defended it. If you look at my videos, you will see that uh, I've not defended it. Ask anybody, ask Mick Whale, ask Josh Whale. They've been there on interview, uh, not interviews, they've been having a cuppa in office with me and Dennis and Michelle, and, and I've basically ripped into Dennis about it. And, you know, you can get put in your place, can't you? I mean, you can have a close friend, can't you? But as you go boxing, it, it's off limits for me. If I'm gonna say something, I'm gonna say something. Uh, hope I don't hit any traffic when I get to Kent. Uh, Porky, AJ Ruiz situation, who is at fault? I don't know if anybody at fault, they're getting paid millions of pounds, I think there's nobody at fault, they've played a blinder, haven't they? Andy Ruiz, you wouldn't say he's best heavyweight in Wales. He exposed Joshua. Joshua were took out in his comfort zone fighting abroad, fighting a style that he's not used to. Uh, he's got the extra few million that he wanted. Um, uh, he got three. He got three million dollars extra. Uh, I don't know. Is he getting twelve million instead of nine? I don't know, I don't care. He's not gonna be you know he's not gonna be buying me buying buying me my house, is he? So 
you know what I mean? It's not going to put money, any money in my bank for direct debits. So I wish Andy Ruiz all the best. Do I hope he wins? You know what? I hope Joshua wins, to be honest, because I think it has a knock-on effect if he's out of boxing. Uh, so I didn't want Joshua to win. I like it to be evened up, but I want Joshua to win now in rematch. People might scoff at that, but it's... British boxing before Joshua came along were dying on its arse, wasn't it? Carl Froch had retired. And I think it was dying on his arse. He gave it, him and George put it on the map with Eddie Hearn, but I think if you take Joshua out of the equation, and I think there's a few others coming to end. Kelbrook and Khan are done, aren't they? Chunky, DeGale, Groves and Bellew have gone. Uh, you know, Chunky, DeGale, Bellew, Groves, David A, between them all, what have they beat? Be about 12 world champions between them. They're not had glittering careers like people say they've had, but they're all gone, aren't they? The old guard. And Luke Campbell's 32 now. Uh, I mean, I've heard a rumour that Stephen Smith might be retired. He's 34. He might be retiring or he's close to it. And that's old for the age group that he fights in. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know, I don't want Joshua to go out of boxing. I think if Joshua goes, Eddie Hearn will go. And I think then it could all collapse. Because I think Eddie Hearn, no matter what you say about Eddie Hearn, he is a hard worker. He is an hard worker and you've got to admire that. And I know he doesn't do all that stuff like driving up and down. And it's a very easy, isn't it, flying about around the world first class. And people shoving microphones in you and eating the best food in restaurants and breezing into rest press conferences and breezing out and sitting ringside. That to me is having fun, it's not working. And Eddie Earns, he goes off the charts. But to me that ain't work. Work is painting your house or digging, a, digging your garden. That's work, or working on a building site or in a factory. That's work. Eddie Earn, what he's doing is, isn't work, but his head must be spinning all the time and like I said they are hard workers but it's very easy to do when you've got the platform they've got they've got the EIS giving them fighters, Sky give them the platform and then you've got IFL behind the gloves and boxing social hanging out back of their arses do you know what I mean, They're asking them nice questions all the time not putting them under pressure so they're having it all their own way so I don't call that work but I think Eddie Earn's good for boxing and you know, I do get Eddie Earn some stick, mainly because he wouldn't call me channel, but I'm not really bothered about it now, to be honest, I'm over it, but it shows you that Eddie Earn didn't want to come on my channel. I went to the fact that I spent, and you could say thousands of pounds, because it won more than 1,000, and it won more than 2,000 pounds. You could say I spent thousands of pounds on a couple of billboards, or several thousand. And he won't want he didn't want to come on channel, did he? So what can you do? What can you if I'm gonna do that and he still don't want to come on channel, that to me shows you that he's got something to hide. So but it's up to you, the boxing fans, to uh, ask Eddie Earn why he don't want to come on Porky's Corner. Ask him. So why don't you wanna go on? What you got to hide, but obviously not a lot not enough people have asked, but whatever. Uh, Matthew Macklin comments on Anthony Yard Porky, what do you think, saying Boatsy beats him? I don't think Boatsy beats Anthony Yard, I think the, the pendulum, pendulum has swung the other way after the weekend. I noticed the Anthony Yard win, nobody made a big fuss about the stoppage, but yet Charlie Edwards as opponent was a world champion for about two minutes. They made a big fuss about that stoppage even though the referee had made his decision. It just shows you what happens. It reminded me of the Edison Miranda fight against Arthur Abraham. Randy Newman made the decision, he declared Miranda the winner, and then before you know where you are, the promoter is telling them to carry on and you can't stop the fight and that. What is going on? I think there needs to be an investigation into the the Charlie Edwards and that uh, that opponent of his, the Mexican kid. There needs to be an investigation, something needs to be sorted. That's in my opinion. But I think Josh Whale probably softened him up in sparring. The outlaw, Josh Whale. Boom, 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 boom. Looking well, Josh. 
So good luck to Josh in his next fight. But Matthew Macklin's comments regarding Boatsy and Yard. Boatsy don't beat Yard. And Boatsy, he's got to step up now. Yard stepped up. Let's see Boatsy step up. Dillian White's B sample. Where's he go from here, Porky? From Stuart. Uh, Dillian White, where does he go from here? Uh, I don't really know where Dillian White goes. I don't really know at all. Uh, I don't know. If Dillian White gets a fight lined up in the next few months and it's pay-per-view, will the fans buy into it? No, I don't think they will. But if it's a fight with somebody where we say, you know, that's a great fight, that, the fans would have to buy into it. And I think the only fight that he could do that with would be Usek. Uh, I don't think Yui Fury will get a pay-per-view now off at back of that loss he's just had. I think Yui's gonna. I think that's put Yui back a year, but he's 25. Just turned is it this week or next week? So Yui's got time on his hands. Uh, so Usek against Dillian White, you'd pay for that. You wouldn't complain about it. Povetkin and Dillian White. Povetkin's team wouldn't be complaining about Dillian White's B sample, would they? For the simple reason he's been done a couple of times, hasn't he? So. It is what it is, isn't it? So Eddie's going to have to think on his feet. What fight can we put out there that the fans won't kick off about? Uh, so, Dillian White, did he take the substance? Mark Tibbs says he's not a cheat. And you'd have to take Mark Tibbs at his word, but it's come back, on it? So we're going to see, aren't we? Summit's not right. I think we need a bit of clarity on it. Is he innocent? Is he guilty? I think Dillian White's had an hard time, but... The silence is golden and it's still golden, is it? What we're into now, six at the seventh week. So, uh, Grove, George Groves on Campbell is another case of pals backing pals. Where's Campbell, age 32, go from here, Porky? Uh, look, George Groves were adamant that he'd win one here, but. This is ex roommate, isn't he from England days? He's not gonna say any other, is he? He's not gonna say any other. Plus he's trained by Shane McGuigan. Groves were trained by Shane McGuigan. Oh I think he's a great fighter. Uh, a great uh, trainer and I think he's one at best in country, Shane McGuigan. For his age, he could train for another 40 year. So Shane McGuigan's here to stay, so get behind him. I think he's a good trainer. And I think he's learned he's up. I think he's made Luke Campbell a better fighter, but you're up against Lomachenko, aren't you? And I think Luke Campbell realised early doors that a win for him, a big win, would be getting a points loss, wouldn't it? That was his, that was his moment, wasn't it? He took Lomachenko to points, but I thought that he, he could have just jumped on Lomachenko. The way to beat Lomachenko, I think, you've just got to catch him cold. You can't try and be technical with him because he's just too advanced. So, Eddie Hearn signing Triple G, Porky. What do you think is next for Triple G? Will Billy Joe Saunders fight him? In fact, will Saunders ever fight anybody with a pulse, Porky? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You have to watch what you say about Billy Joe, he'll come and knock on your door. Uh, I think Billy Joe Saunders is an amazing talent. It's not the first time I've said it. I think Tyson Fury is. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know what. I've lost interest, to be honest, with Billy Joe Saunders. I've really lost interest, to be honest. And I think I just, I just want him to. He seems to have been calling out these people years, doesn't he? Speaking of pulses. Porky as Tyson Fury's next opponent got a pulse. Uh, this is from Brad. Uh, obviously he's got a pulse because he's alive, Brad. But yeah, I see your point. It's uh, Otto Wallin. It's not a very good fight, is it at all? Uh, so I don't know, but. Speaking of pulses, we just mentioned that. Kovalev versus Canelo. Canelo all day as Crusher is done. Uh, but getting back to that Tyson Fury one, uh, I think that Tyson Fury and Billy Joe Saunders, 
they're having it off, aren't they? Basically, they're earning millions of pounds and they're not risking their hose, are they? And Billy Joe Saunders, for the last four years, been calling out Canelo and Triple G. And it's now getting on for four years since he beat Andy Lee, isn't it? And how many world champions has he beat since Andy Lee, where he's beat Lemieux? That's about it, really, isn't it? What's Tyson Fury done in the last four years? Who's he beat? Well, his wins in the last four years, since Vladimir Klitschko, are Serifa Sarifi, Pianetta, and Tom Swartz. That's it. So... Tyson Fury's had millions of dollars since then. So I think both of them are maybe playing, I don't know, are they, are they playing everybody? Are Tyson Fury, is Tyson Fury and Billy Joe, are they playing promoters? Are they saying, do you know what? <laughs> Sticking two fingers up. Is that what they're doing? I don't know. I got the Yui Fury fight wrong, but I was... Uh, but I was right that it would go to points, but uh, I got it wrong, I thought you would win on points. Uh, yeah, I see, I see where you're coming from with that, Bruce, but Yui Fury, inexperience, I think, cost Yui on night against Povetkin the other night, inexperience. Uh, it really I think inexperience cost him uh, I was I have been in touch with Peter Fury uh, I'm not gonna read out what Peter and me spoke about because there is uh, he did say I could say something uh, we, did, we did speak about something uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 texts of Peter Fury from 10.55 to 4.10 a.m. Saturday to Sunday. Ending with and two voicemails. I know what the voicemail said. I'm not going to read it out. Uh, Peter just said, said that you is six foot six. And he's not going to do cruiserweight. There's a rumour going around he's going to do cruiserweight. I asked Peter about it. No, he ain't. Look, Povetkin's a top operator, like Peter said to me the other night. Uh, he's a top operator. And there's no shame in that. The pool left fight, pool, Yui got cut early doors in the Parker fight at 41. Yui's 24, turning 25. He's lost on points to Povetkin. It's not end of the world, is it? It's not end of the world. At least he's wanting to take them fights. That's me coming to Yui's defence. As regards what I spoke about in Bulgaria with Peter, I said to him, he said, what do you think? We're waiting for his luggage. And I said, me and Frank were stood there, Peter Fury, I mean, we were at the front but waiting for his luggage and I said, no, we were the last ones waiting for luggage, me and Peter, sorry. And I said, in my opinion, I think you need, and I've mentioned this before, I think you need, I think you need to take you out of the limelight for two to three years, Peter, and get him 10 or 12 wins and then come back when you've developed a style. That's what I said. By that time, Yui will have had his man strength and, and he'll be more rounded off. Because if Yui would have beat, got the decision against Parker, it wouldn't have been the finished article. But he's gaining all that now in these hard fights and he's just had that fight with Povetkin. Uh, and I still think that Yui could be took out of the game for two years and have eight fights. And, but then again, it's a business as well, and they have to earn, don't they? So, I don't know, it's a tough one, isn't it? But that's what I'd do. Peter's a millionaire, he's not short of a few quid. He could take Yui out at game, come back when he's 27. He could be 30 wins, three losses, age 27 in two years, and come back and be a better fighter, and be ready to go then. But, I don't know, is Yui a back foot fighter? Is he a more inexperienced version than the same style as Tyson, I don't know. What I do know is what Peter said to me in his voicemail and his text messages that Yui Fury 
uh, 15 stone 13 stroke 16 stone is six foot six and he could take a dig he won't be able to take them digs at cruiserweight so he can take a dig he's never been on the floor in fact tyson fury's never been on floor on peter fury's watch because when he went out and fought cunningham and got dropped tyson uh, didn't have Peter in corner, did he? Because Peter got arrested in Canada going into America, so he had Clifton Mitchell in corner, so Tyson's never been dropped with Peter in corner and Yui Ant. So people giving Yui a hard time. I don't agree with it. Could he have fought better? Yeah. What score did I have it? I can see a 7-5 score to Povetkin but I can also see an 8-4 score to Povetkin depending on how you look at it and at it a couple of rounds were close I'm not going to beat you the back of the bus seeing as what I told Peter here uh, I thought Povetkin won you will come back is what I said Povetkin won't fight that's it they're not Peter's not daft they know Povetkin won they'll come again but like I said Yui's got another 10 or 12 year in boxing, there's no rush, this is why I think they could take him out of the game a couple of years instead of being in these fights because he's had them couple of wins since Pulev he's had a couple of wins since Pulev and he could, do, could, could have done me a couple of more before Pivek and that's my opinion and I'm entitled to it but who knows, I mean what do I know uh, 26 minutes uh, so, will you be dropping to £200, Porky? Yeah, that's what people have been asking, and I asked Peter that. I heard Johnny Nelson going on about it, and he said, no, definitely not dropping to cruiserweight. Uh, drug tests, why is everyone not tested in the UK? Europe and USA porky from novice all the way through it's it's from this is from Carol this is about funding Carol it's about funding it's we're always gonna pay for it it's like signing fighters first thing Dennis says yeah he is a good signing Russ and yeah he is free a, a free agent who's gonna pay for him and who's gonna pay for the opponent it's about money if you've got money in boxing you can do what you want uh, who's my favorite promoter trainer, manager, cut man and boxer and who's the best in the world at the moment. I'm not going to say who my favourite is because it can cause problems. Uh, I think the best promoter in the world at the moment is Eddie Hearn. I think the best trainer, uh, I think Shane McGuigan, I think he's the best trainer uh, for, for such, somebody at such a young age. Uh, manager, management advisor, I'd say Al Heyman, although MTK. They're advisors, sort of management people, aren't they? So, uh, best cut man, Jimmy Tibbs, stroke Kerry Kays. Best boxer in the world at the moment, Usek or Errol Spence. That's my opinion, I'm entitled to it. Probably going to go with Usek because he's undisputed cruiserweight champion and he'd done it, he'd, he'd been undisputed, were it 15, 16 fights? So, Usek, I think Usek's best fighter in the world. Billy Joe Saunders, uh, is he uh, just taking the Mickey Porky out of the system with like Tyson Fury? I don't know. Uh, I don't know what Billy Joe Saunders is doing, if he's taking the Mickey or what. But what I do know is that Billy Joe Saunders is beat Andy Lee, Lemieux, Eubank Ryder and Monroe. That's it. Monroe, Ryder and Eubank are not world champions, although you could say Eubank is being IBO. Uh, Lemieux were a former champion. Eubank didn't have a belt when Billy beat him. And Andy Lee, yeah, he were a world champion. So, Tyson's beat Vladimir. Uh, he was in his 40th year. In his 68th, 69th fight, whatever. Uh, Cunningham, he were a cruiserweight blown up. He dropped Tyson. Aimer and... Chisora twice, Hamer won a world champion. Is the Hamer fight with Tyson Fury a no contest? I heard it is due to the Nandrolone issue. Chisora, the first one my life and death, the second one Tyson schooled him and beat him up. But we're talking Chisora, he's Euro level. Uh, so, are they playing everybody? No, boxing's an hard game and Tyson and Billy Joe, they don't owe anybody anything. They don't owe anybody anything, so uh, 
I think that's about it really so peace out keep on trucking keep supporting boxing it's a fantastic sport uh, that's about it really I've got let's have a look let's see where I'm going the route is being calculated. 151. Please proceed to the highlighted route. 151.9 mile to go now. Estimated time of arrival. Quarter to nine. I bet it's longer than that. So, right, it's six o'clock. So, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. I just want to get this video finished. Uh, uh, so busy A1 in it. Get these here on mopeds. Right. Uh, just slot this into onto the back of that last video, Nicola. Let's put it on back at end. I'll, I'll back to it. Is AJ's Russell, is AJ's attitude gone a bit OG of lately? Uh, I don't know, I think we're seeing a different side to Joshua. Maybe he's just been nice and humble and too much. I mean, what is all that? All that humble stuff? Uh, I don't know. I was listening to uh, Ultra Tech Sports Raw YouTube big fan of ultras uh, and he he's he comes out with a lot of stuff like me he tells it straight I do I know he, do, he is a little bit biased towards Frank Warren fighters I can understand that he does hammer any Eddie Hearn uh, but he's a very good boxing man and I like what he stands for and he's right why, why do people need to Oh, he, I like how he comes across on IFL, I'm going to support him, and he's a cheeky guy, and you know, why do people have to be humble and all that, it's the fight game, isn't it, and you get hurt, so I agree with, I agree with Ultra Tech Sports Raw, I think that all hardcore boxing fans and all people who work in the boxing industry, you trying to race me in there, should. I think all people should watch Ultra Tech Sports Raw's video. I think they should watch Bayloric TV, Ingram. I think Ingram makes a few good points, although he does do a lot of interacting with James Ali Bashir, but he's a good boxing bloke as well, isn't he? Uh, has Joshua gone all OG on us? I think he's trying to show a meaner streak to get his thing going, but. Has anybody ever seen a one-sided beatdown like Joshua got against Ruiz? Has anybody ever come back from that? Now, Carl Froch never got dropped against Andre Ward. He never got tortured like Joshua did. And if, he, if Froch were to rematch Ward, you could probably say he probably beats Ward one-sided 20 times, doesn't he? got one of them horrible styles Ward, hasn't it? It's, it's a bit like Kid Galahad. It's an hard style to beat because they're not, they don't engage with you. They're not there to be it. Now, Joshua, he's in an hard fight against Ruiz, in my opinion. Very hard fight. They're getting this left-hand side lane in. Let these plant pots get by me. Estimated time of arrival, 8.38. So I'm making good time here. Can't get in my hotel by afternoon anyway. <laughs> so I don't know what I'm rushing for. Uh, Blue Water Shopping Centre. Go in there. I've looked around shops, I think, for a few hours. Might get my kids some of might not as well. If they want to fall time, don't they, kids? Was Eddie really going to sue Al Eamon? From Jennifer in Kettering. 
Was Eddie really going to sue Al Heyman, Jennifer? I don't think he were, or Ruiz. When have you ever seen Matchroom sue anybody? When have you ever seen Matchroom win a purse bid? Matchroom are about the money, they don't want to waste money on court cases, not if they can get round it. They see the bigger picture, don't they? They're not like Frank Warren and Dennis, where they want to sue people and waste money. You want to ask people, Dennis about suing people, well, Dennis lost, I don't know, 150 grand in a case against Eugene Maloney. They could have settled it for 10 grand. Look, there's no winners, there's only lawyers. Lawyers are the biggest crooks ever. The bigger crooks than Don King and Bob Arum ever were. Nobody ever won anything or achieved anything when they've got when they need it with lawyers. Now, as far as I'm concerned, Matchroom lost a case against Steve Collins, cost him a million pound, I believe. Google Steve Collins versus Barry Hearn High Court case. You'll know, you'll know what, 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 you might understand a little bit about the boxing industry then. Uh, so, I don't even know how to work D Mister here. Hey, I know what my seats are now, heated seats. It's this button here, you press it, and it's level one, two, or three, and your seats are warm. That good. But getting back to uh, Matchroom, no, they weren't going to sue him, they were just flexing the muscles, weren't they? And they've only got little muscles, Matchroom, haven't they? Like pipe cleaners. But, I'm glad they've sorted it, and the fact that they've bent over and let Al Heyman shaft them for a few more million, that to me shows weakness. Why didn't they just take it and go all the full, full steam ahead? This is why I didn't like how for Carl Frotcher's career petered out because when Bob Arum said, if you fight Chavez in Vegas with Frotch, I want a million dollars, he's got a fight left on my contract. If you don't pay me a million dollars, I'll sue you. Eddie Hearn should have said, go on then, sue me. They should have done that, shouldn't they? But between, I don't know what's happened, there's somebody to blame, it's either Carl Frotch, or Eddie Hearn, one of them didn't want it, they didn't want the smoke, they didn't want the Bob Arum smoke. Now, as far as I'm concerned, Frot should have had his swan song, should have had his pension fight against Bob Arum, but he didn't get it, did he? So, it is what it is, isn't it? One of them things, isn't it? But, I just think that Matchroom, they're not stupid, they don't like wasting money on lawyers. Barry Earn spent enough money trying to sue West Ham, didn't he, or Premier League, or wherever it were. So, it is what it is, isn't it? But, it is what it is. Uh, when will Bob Arum retire? I don't know, is he 90 next year, Bob Arum? 89 or something, I don't know, he's 80 odd, isn't he? He's an old gadget, isn't he? Uh, has he been promoting since he was 36? And he's been promoting since England won World Cup, hasn't he, Bob Arum? So, what's 53 years in game? After him, you've got Don King, uh, 48 year promoting. Uh, God, they make Dennis Hobson 20, 22 year promoting. They make Dennis look like uh, a novice, don't they? Them guys. Frank Warren's been at it since 1980. He was doing unlicensed fights in the 70s with Roy Shore and Lenny McLean, wasn't he? And uh, Man Mountain York or something, whatever they're called. Madman Mountain York. But, uh, Barry Hearn's been doing it since end of 86, beginning of 87. He did a couple of shows with Mickey Duff before he did the Bugner fight. I think that all these old school promoters have had the day now. I think it's the new breed now, isn't it? Eddie Earnlock. I think 
unless you move with times Frank Warren's having to move with times I want Dennis to move with times uh, I want Dennis to move with times and and start uh, changing a few things up uh, like them RS5 out it's so nice aren't they uh, but it is what it is isn't it I mean Dennis is gonna do what he wants to do in it we haven't got a big stable it's just manageable uh, people we've got around us we like I like Josh Whale uh, I haven't met Nathan Owen yet, Dennis has no signing. I saw a couple of comments about him on YouTube thing, I don't know what that was about. Somebody having a dig? I don't know, it's probably somebody from another rival promotional company wanting me to come out with some. I haven't met Nathan Owen yet, so I haven't met him. Dennis has signed him, it's a friend of his son, but I haven't met him. So let's just hope it's not one of them pals are pals and they can't fake because it don't work like that, it's like lending your car to a pal in it or selling a car to a pal, there's always problems isn't there but we need people like Josh Whale on board, dedicated kids that are, can fight you know, Josh Whale can fight so let's hope the relationship works out with Josh and he gets a win this month, three week away a week on Friday Josh's fight let's hope that he gets a win and then we get him a title shot round about Christmas uh, it's all looking good looking well Josh Josh looks after his son just like Povetkin people say Povetkin is finished he's 40 well he won't finish was he Samuel Peter he were finished they had enough experience for Huey to learn off but one of them looked after his son and one of them not. Mick, Mick Wales right about that. It's how you look after yourself outside the ring. Longevity. Look at Bernard Hopkins. Never had alcohol. Still had a 28 inch waist. I think, I think he is on slide. That's my early morning alarm clock, 6.30. Uh, so I've made good time, haven't I? Early bird catches the worm. Besides, I want to get something going this week, which channel I want to put massive amounts of effort in this week. So, massive amounts of effort. So, hopefully, I should be moving officers shortly. So, we'll take it channel to the next level. I'll we'll put a few quid in and change a few things about. So, you can't just give in, can you, with channel? Because it's not going our way. You just got to try harder. You've got to try harder and try different things. But is Lomachenko finished? I think he's on slide. I think we've seen the best of him. Uh, I think that people are losing the shit over him, like Bellew and Dave Allen. Oh my God. I think they're losing the shit of him. De I've noticed that Tony Bellew, wherever he goes, he seems to say that Usek and Lomachenko at best in the world and blah de blah. Yeah, because he beat you, didn't he, Usek? You weren't saying that before you fought him. You weren't saying that at all, Tony, were you? Usek is the best fighter in the world, in my opinion. Usek's my pound for pound number one. Then Errol Spence. Then Crawford. They're my top three because they've not been beat. Canelo and Lomachenko, four and five, they've been beat. They've been beat, them guys. So if you've been beat, the others haven't been beat. That's how it goes, isn't it? Lomachenko's that good, he's been beat. So, Salido beat him. It is what it is. 122 miles to go, estimated time of arrival. 840. Uh, so Lomachenko's on the slide. Is he in a poor era? Yes. Very poor era. Could you imagine Lomachenko? Could you imagine Lomachenko against Floyd Mayweather, Oscar De La Hoy, Pernell Whitaker, Roberto Duran, 
there's four fighters there who, who all beat him comfortably at lightweight, all of them beat him. Terence Crawford against Lomachenko, I'd like to see that fight. Lomachenko going up to 140, Terence Crawford coming down to 140. Yes please, that is a great fight. I think Terence Crawford beats him at 140. I think that's about it really. Yep, that's about it. So Yeah, so just them things that you guys have sent me in. Points. Latest points. I don't know what we're gonna call this. I don't know what we're gonna call this video. Let's have a I don't think there's any more questions. Uh, call this video Porky Brutally Honest, how's about that? Well, it's just being honest and giving your opinion, or if, I don't know, I'm sure you, Nick will think of a title for it, I don't have much input on stuff like that, because no matter what I say, Nick goes and does it anyway. Say for instance, if I put the fantastic pink and I get on position for black, she never puts the shot where I put the black in, she cuts it out. I don't know why. I potted a black that were a trick shot and she didn't put it on. It were a trick shot into middle bag off at bottom two cushions. Didn't put it on. We're gutted. But we're just trying to jazz it up, trying to make things different. We're not going to sit there copying everybody else's channel where they go and hang out at the back of Eddie Hearn's arsehole and just ask the same questions. Because that, a lot of channels have copied Coogan, and you've got to give Coogan Cassius a bit of credit. People think that's the way forward, so they copy him, and they build up relationships with fighters, but I don't want to be like them. I've never been somebody that follows somebody. People have always wanted to follow me as a kid. Now, not, I, I don't follow people, so our channel's different. When I saw Dillian White's YouTube channel, the other day he's got the same introduction music at the beginning as me, so I'm gutted like. But my channel's been going longer than him, hasn't it? But, which is what it is, isn't it? You get a selection of, of, of introduction music to start with, so I'm thinking about changing the introduction music for Porky's Corner at the beginning and just just jazzing it up a little bit. But like I said, we're learning on job and to do things like that you have to invest in software and you can go on forever investing and putting money into it, but there's no coming out, there's no coming back out. It's a hobby that it's an expensive hobby. But then again, so is drugs, isn't it? Drugs are expensive hobbies. If you can have a drug habit, 150 quid a day for 10 years, you can have a YouTube channel, can't you? Because what's 150 quid a day for 10 years? Half a million quid, that, isn't it? Hmm. Half a million quid. I should be ashamed of myself, shouldn't I? I don't think it's that much, though. I think I've built up to to 150 a day, probably started off on 20 a day, you probably could look at probably 400 grand spent on drugs, but drugs are for mugs and boozers are cruisers, and when I get to Kent today, I go out tonight, I'm going to go on a mini cruise, just a mini one Nicola, it's about a five or a pint down here in it. <laughs> I'm only pulling you, I'm only messing with you. Shout out to Kevin Hart, I hope you're alright, he's had a crash on he, in a 1970 muscle car, Barracuda, he rolled it down uh, uh, Hollywood Hills is it, Malibu, down hills and it's ended up flipping and he's in a bad way, he's got a bad back injury, I hope he's alright, Kevin Hart, I like him, I think he's funny. So peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing.
It's a fantastic sport.